Hey everybody, my name is Leanrath, and today I'm going to be playing Bloodborne. Really excited to play this game with you guys. I've already played through it once and uh, about halfway through New Game Plus. Uh, so I have experienced most of what the game has to offer, but I loved it so much I wanted to play it on the channel. So I have no qualms with starting up a new game, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. Um, so we're just going to hop right into it. Oh yeah. Pale. Well, you've come to the right place. Yarnum is the home of blood ministration. You need only unravel its mystery. But where's an outsider like yourself to begin? Easy, with a bit of Yarnum blood of your own. But first, you'll need a contract. I don't know about you, but I've never signed a contract with someone that doesn't have eyes before. That's just, that's shady business. So we'll go ahead and get started. I already have a couple of appearances saved, so I'm just going to start with this one. Got one all set up here, so now I just have to enter a name. Ah, uh, we'll do something cute. We'll do... I'm completely biased. But we'll do Elizabeth. And we'll just go through the options here real quick. Um, our origin, that's essentially your class. Uh, what your beginning stats are going to be, what your beginning level is going to be. Uh, the default milk toast, that is uh, average across the board. As you can see, they pretty much all even out. Um, Lone Survivor, that's going to be your health build, higher vitality, more HP. Uh, Trouble Child, that's more endurance, that's good, uh, like, stamina, a little bit higher on the skill, so that's not a bad starting place for a skill build. Uh, Violent plat Past, that's your, kind of your strength-focused warrior build. Professional, that's skill, so that's your, your king, your, your, your fencing swords, that sort of thing. Uh, military Veteran, that one is kind of balanced between strength and skill. Uh, so if you want to be proficient in all sorts of weapons, that's a good start. Noble Scion, that's uh, focus on skill and blood tinge. So guns, skill weapons, that's going to be their, their specialization. Cruel Fate, that's Arcane. Um, there aren't a whole lot of spells in this game, and the ones that there are, I don't have a whole lot of experience with. Because I haven't tried an Arcane build yet. But... Um, Basically, arcane scales your elemental damage. If you have a lightning-based weapon, fire-based weapon, something like that, arcane's going to make it stronger. So that's the point of that. Um, what I usually almost always go for in these kinds of games are the low-level builds. So once that start you out at the very bottom, uh, in this case it's going to be Waste of Skin. It's uh, akin to... Uh, God, I can't remember what they were called in Dark Souls, but... Basically, the level 1 build that sucks and starts with nothing. So that's what I'm going to start out with here. We got our name, got our class, appearance, we're good to go. Good. All signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. Yeah, don't you worry. We're just yeah. going to give you some blood with no eyeballs. Ooh, I'm here. Bad. <laughs> I hope we're not getting his blood. He just looks dirty. Everything must have went okay. We're just you know, looking around. Oh yeah, that's normal. That's where the blood came from. That big ol' fucking splooge pool on the ground. Nothing to worry about though. Just a bad dream. And... Yeah. Even, even less to worry about. The thing that was terrifying just got set on fire by God only fucking knows.
Oh yeah, why not? Let's let's add on to the what the fuck salad and have these guys just crawling all over you. You know, once you get used to them, they're kind of cute. Aside from the creepy one right here that tries to put his hand on your face, I'm not uh, down with that. You found yourself a hunter. Alright, so here we go. Start out in Yosefka's clinic here. Can't go this way. So that means we must go this way. Go ahead, take a tumble down the stairs here. Nothing in our first room. Oh, okay. Well, you just enjoy your dindins there, Mr. Werewolf Guy. Oh, we saw us. Stealthy did not work out for us. That's okay. Gonna pick up the shiny over here real quick. Oh, and get mauled. Get! And we're trapped in a corner. Trapped in a corner. Ha 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 ha. Made it, sucker. Okay, grab those bullets. Just wrap around here, go through the gate. Don't mind me, I'm just temporarily invincible while I hulk open this door. We're gonna roll over here, get away from Psycho Werewolf Guy. Make sure to avoid this asshole! <laughs> oh, well that almost worked, but the werewolf... It is a persistent bugger. Alright, so this is the hunter's dream. This is where hunters go when they quote unquote die. Um, first thing you'll notice, cute little doll over here, just chilling, cause why not? I uh, want to make sure that you talk to these messengers on the ground, they're going to give you your very first weapons. You have three choices, the first two weapons, they're strength based, with your threaded cane being skill based, uh, which is kind of this game's equivalent of dexterity. Um, I'm a big fan of the threaded clink, threaded cane. My last playthrough was a skill build, so it was uh, pretty much the weapon I took with me the entire playthrough. But another good choice is the hunter's axe. If you're looking at a strength build, uh, the basically transformation version of that is a big ass halberd, and it has amazing range on it. So. Uh, if it were up to me, I would pick between these two. Saw cleaver's okay, but it's not worth writing home about. It doesn't really matter what you pick because later on in the game you can pick, uh, you know, the, you can pick up the other two weapons that you didn't start out with. So we're gonna go ahead and start out with the threaded cane. The second set of messengers. That's where you're gonna pick up your weapon. Uh, you have two choices. You have a hunter pistol. You have a hunter blunderbuss. The pistol is more for, uh, it does more damage, it's longer range. The blunderbuss has much shorter range, but when you fire, it fires to spread. So it's much better close up, and in my opinion, it's much better for staggering. So that's what we're going to do. And then this last set, it's for your notebook, writing messages to other people. Assuming you're playing online. Um... And this door is closed, so I guess we have no choice but to head back to Yarnum. So now that we're all set up with gear, we actually have a fighting chance. We're going to go beat the shit out of that werewolf. Alright, first thing we're going to do, equip weaponry because we're just going to look like idiots. We run up to the big old battle werewolf motherfucker and slap him in the face. So instead, 
I stab him and miss. So, took a little bit more damage than I planned on, but we got makeup blood vials, so I don't feel too bad about it. One important thing to remember in this game that I always tend to forget uh, is that you can press the up key on the D-pad to give yourself blood bullets. So that gives you some extra Quicksilver bullets, and it can go over your capacity of 20. Uh, so essentially you could have a max of 25. So it's definitely nice to keep on hand, especially if you're going to use a blood vial anyway, why not? Another important thing is staggering because it sets you up for visceral attacks like that one. You use stagger enemies by shooting them in the face like they damn well deserve, but it's important to time it correctly. For most enemies, if you uh, shoot them during their downswing, towards the end of their attack, that almost always staggers them. And it's very helpful on bosses. Most bosses can be staggered. Uh, in some cases, certain forms, certain stages of bosses can't be, but almost all of them can. So we've lit our first lamp. That is the Bloodborne equivalent to a bonfire in Dark Souls, so we can teleport back the d to these if we find ourselves dead. Um, and then any house with these bright, like kind of, well not bright, but kind of like dull red lamps, these have NPCs in them and you can talk to them. You must be a hunter, and not one from around here either. I'm Gilbert, a fellow outsider. You must have had a fine time of it. Yarnum has a special way of treating guests. Well, I don't think I could stand if I wanted to, but I'm willing to help if there's anything that can be done. <laughs> this town is cursed. Whatever your reasons might be, you should plan a swift exit. Whatever can be gained from this place, it will do more harm than good. So, cursed town. Uh, woke up with creepy guy giving us blood. So far it's been a good trip. I would definitely recommend Yarnum as a vacation spot. Gonna continue along our way here. Not by be fooled by this trickster. Breaking out from a bunch of bunch of crates. This is where it gets interesting. Oh! Too interesting, too fast. I'm not ready. Instead of messing around with these guys, we're going to make an important move by going over here and opening up our first shortcut. That's going to take us back to the area with the ladder to the lamp, making it very easy to get back to where we are now. With skipping some of the fun things that we just went through. Not a whole lot, it's a pretty short shortcut. Haha, <laughs> short shortcut. But it's just one of many that we're gonna unlock. Sneak up on this guy. Eh, he thinks his shield's gonna do something. What a wiener. Stab that guy in the throat a couple of times. that set us up for a visceral attack and you'll notice when you get attacked um, and you get damaged part of your HP bar turns orange that is HP that you can recover if you attack while well, you still have orange on your HP bar every attack will give you some of your HP back huh. in turn if you get damaged and you do a visceral attack almost all of your HP is going to come back or at least early on in the game might not be the case later on, but... Oh, 
Oh no! Okay, so that guy sliced one too many times that I was ready for. Alright, so... I'll slide down the ladder here and make use of our newly opened shortcut to get back to where we just were. Go into whip mode and mess these guys up real quick. Channel the spirit of Indiana Jones. Okay, so my whip hit the carriage there, got deflected, and it ended up in me getting absolutely destroyed. If you'll notice, I don't know if you paid any attention uh, before I died and lost all of them, but your blood echoes are up there in the top right corner next to the odd symbol, and then right below that you have an eyeball. That eyeball is your insight, and that changes a lot of things throughout the game. It doesn't really start to come into play until you're a decent chunk into the game, but you'll notice it when it takes effect. I know I said I was going to run past these guys, but now I'm pissed off and and vengeance must be dolt out. Much smoother that time without deflected whips. Hmm. Not quite catching him in his downswing. There we go. And don't let this guy over here trick you, he's not sleeping. Or dead. Bloodstone shard. That is used for upgrading your weapons, so you definitely want to collect as many of those as possible early on. Uh, weapon upgrades make a huge difference at all points in the game. They do get you know, as you would expect, harder and harder to upgrade, but everyone counts. We're gonna go ahead and make some blood bullets here in just a moment when I can manage to whack someone to get my HP back. Oh! Or I'll get shot. rolling on through. You do not want to get shot by the gun guys. They attack very slowly and they're easy to kill, but if they shoot you they do a shit ton of damage and it hurts. It hurts bad. And this is going to be like your first big enemy of the game that's not a boss. I want to try to kill this guy whenever you can because he almost always drops blood vials and especially early on in the game blood vials are a precious commodity that will sometimes get you fucking killed I guess so we're not gonna bother with a shortcut because in all reality that particular shortcut doesn't make things much shorter so we'll cut through here Pick up the shiny that we missed. Molotovs are very strong in the early game. Cut past these guys, don't mind me, pardon me, coming through. And once you know where you're going, traversing the areas are is very quick. Shortcuts certainly make it quicker. But, for the most part, if you just run through and you ignore bosses, or not bosses, but the, the small fry enemies, you can get to a boss pretty quickly. 
Oh no, they followed! Oh, oh boy, I was not expecting that one. They usually give up by now. This is just a little bit rough because I'm running out of stamina. There we go. And then we got our echoes back. You can tell if an enemy have his, has your echoes because their eyes glow purple. And it won't always be that your echoes will go to an enemy. Sometimes if you die to a boss or a stronger enemy, or you die and there's nothing around, if you fall off of something, your echoes will be in a blood pile on the ground. Uh, with a little beam of light coming out of it. So just to keep yourself aware. Okay, from here we got our souls back. Or echoes. I'm really bad about calling them souls anyway, even though that's not what they're technically called in this game. We got our echoes back. I'm going to run straight for the boss. And see how we do. And these dogs. Dogs are the worst enemy in the game. They are harder than like half of the bosses, I kid you not. They're awful. I hate them. It's werewolves. They don't. They're not even paying attention. They don't give a fuck. Keep on moving forward. Jump over the asshole crows. Go through an archway. And then our buddy's upstairs. Hey, buddy. So this is our first boss. And he's hopefully not going to jack us up. I say, and then I take a shit ton of damage. So not looking good so far. One thing that will help out is by hot keying our Molotov cocktails. Yeah, get that junk out of the way. So as far as bosses go, the blunderbuss isn't always the best for staggering enemies. Come here, buddy. Oh! Right under your grasp. Stab in the ass a little bit. He's gonna run away. He doesn't like that. No one likes that. Really wish he would stop putting his back against the wall. Uh oh, that's never good. That's bad, Juju. Priority number one is going to be healing up. Set this asshole on fire, because he damn well deserves it. Getting angry. Oh, I'm out of bullets. That might be good to know before I try staggering. Powering up, we'll get a couple of cheap shots in. Oh! 
try to stay behind him as much as possible. A lot of his attacks are front swipes. Occasionally you'll notice if you do enough damage to a body part, blood will splash out of it and it'll get stunned for a little bit. So we're almost there. And then he's just gonna sideswipe like crazy. Oh no way! Totally had it, and then we just got Wombo comboed into a corner. Ah, well, what can you do? The takeaway from that is, is just entering the boss arena, you get Insight. And in this case, you know, like I mentioned, Insight changes the game. And the biggest change you'll see is that our Hello, doll friend Hunter. is now up and around. I am a doll. Here in this dream to look after you. Honorable Hunter, pursue the echoes of blood. And I will channel them into your strength. You will hunt beasts. And I will be here for you. To embolden your sickly spirit. Alright, so the doll serves Very much the well. same purpose as... Let the echoes um, become your strength. The girl in green from Dark Souls 2. That's where you level up. You spend your blood echoes to get... To level up your stats. Well, we just lost all of ours because Farewell, the queen. first boss is a big old fucking bully. So, there's not much we can do just yet. But now that we have unlocked the doll, now we... You know, there's actual purpose to killing enemies. So next episode we'll probably gain a couple levels, take another shot at the Cleric Beast, who uh, you might have noticed he's not super hard, especially once you kind of know what his attack patterns are, but he can hit pretty hard and again as you might notice, if he gets a good combo off on you, you're dead.